I'm live. <gasps> Someone joined us. Hello, I'm just gonna wait for people to join. Five o'clock on the dot. Hi everyone. Welcome to my live. Sponsored today by Absolute US. I think I have a, I'm like, I need to be able to add that quote. Just I'll it write it in. in. Yeah. Thank you for joining me, everyone. I'm going to type in this thing. So much for my excellent planning. Tag Absolute US and share what? Love responsibly means. Okay. How do I pin the comment? Did that pin it automatically? Pin. Did I do it? Yes. Oh my gosh. <gasps> I pinned my first comment ever on on Instagram Live. Hi everyone, thank you for joining. Um, as those of you who follow me may know. I do not consider Instagram hosting to be one of my great skills, but I have dolled myself up for a good cause, which first of all is love. It is love for all of you. I have been gone for a little bit um, from Instagram, working on some projects, one of which I get to announce very soon, which I'm excited about. Um, but I, I wanted to spread some love to all of you. Uh, my community, my love and appreciation. You are slaying the world and changing things and making things better and different and brighter. And I see you and we need that so much. So love for all of you. And then also very importantly, a little love from Absolute US, Absolute Vodka supporters of the LGBTQ experience for quite a few decades. Um, uh, we are teaming up with Absolute US, Absolute Vodka to participate in an important conversation about responsible love. And I'm going to be joined by a very, very special superstar guest who I'm going to introduce in a second. It's Melissa Benoist. Um, and we're going to take a few of your questions. But first, I wanted to share just a tiny little bit about what responsible love means to me. I love that an alcohol brand is talking about responsibility. Responsibility is the new fun. Who needs, we can't really party, so we are going to cultivate responsibility and love. And what do those things even mean? To me, I think responsibility is about intention, putting in effort, compassion, striving to make equality, um, and then lots of self-reflection that goes along with that and how you make transformation. And love is the relationships we have with other people, whether you are single or in a romantic relationship, when you bring love to those connections, those human connections, even the relationship with yourself, you start asking questions that force you to, to change, to, to respond, to work better together. And I believe that responsible love changes and transforms you. <laughs> Excellent theme for drag. Absolute is celebrating all the different forms of love uh, that are out there and that are valid. And I'm really honored that they asked me to have a conversation today with an incredible special guest, Melissa Benoist. You may know her best as the star. I'm gonna slowly begin my multitasking and start trying to add in. Um, Okay. Oh, excellent. Um, <clears throat> you may know her best as the star of Supergirl on The CW, which is wrapping up to much acclaim in its sixth season. I actually just started <laughs> watching it recently. It is fun. It is campy. It is well-written. Everything we need our femme empowerment superhero shows to be, and it also has a strong feminist slant. Yes, Melissa says that her inspos are... Susan Sontag and Gloria Steinem. I mean, what is not to love? She is also a musical theater queen, got a breakthrough as Marley Rose on Glee, which was incredible. 
Um, and she also starred as Carol King in Beautiful on Broadway. Tap danced as Supergirl, the lip, list keeps going. And she just announced her new production company, Through Three Things, named after Mary Oliver poem I read, which will produce TV programming for Warner Media. So she's making moves and I'm gonna be emailing her some unsolicited TV pitches after <laughs> we have this conversation. Um, so she, oh, she also, speaking about love, just had a baby Huxley with husband and Supergirl co-star Chris Wood. So let me... The gorgeous and talented Superstar Melissa Benoist. Johnny's telling me I have lipstick on my teeth. <laughs> so I'll do that while I wait. What an introduction. Oh, hey, Queen. <laughs> hey, you look so good. Oh, they, they told me neutral, so I went for it. <laughs> I love those curtains. Oh, Not thank you. <laughs> I have a bulk uh, fabric discount supplier, so I can keep make it look like I'm always somewhere different when I'm just trapped in the same room. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Oh, so fantastic. Congrats on all the amazing news in your life and your career. You are truly, like, continue to just soar into the skies. Well, I, it's, it's a, such a pleasure to talk to you, who you are making just as big of waves in incredible ways and I am such a fan of yours and I was Thank telling you. you earlier like literally everyone in my life my best friend my sister my co-stars on Supergirl were all texting me like oh my god you're talking to Sasha Velour <laughs> you, make me, you make me blush too much I've already have enough blush on but <laughs> thank you so much well listen we are gonna we're gonna talk to each other answer some questions talk about love and responsible love and respect and um if you who are all watching want to submit your questions we already have 45 we will not be getting to all of those questions but we will select just a few and answer them at the end um, but first, I want to kick things off by asking you, Melissa, about, tell me a little bit about Valentine's Day, because tis the season. I want to know, did you do anything special? Do you have any traditions? You know what? I guess our traditions, my husband and I mostly would, we would go out to eat and have like a feast at our favorite restaurant. Um, yeah. I'd play <laughs> wherever we were, which obviously that was not happening this year, but we ordered in this delicious, like handmade <laughs> um homemade italian pasta from this place i'm in vancouver from this place in vancouver and just like pigged out on carbs and wine Ooh, that sounds so good did you do anything yeah. to make it restaurant style or, or was it just and the labras there you go <laughs> all about the, <laughs> the drama yeah <laughs> We uh, we skipped we skipped Valentine's Day. We've actually spent too much money on restaurants, so we're like not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> We've done too much takeout, um, but we we do still we still lit the candles and ate some avocado toast <laughs> in style. Uh, uh, so romantic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I kind of wax on endlessly about responsible love, but I'm dying to know what um, what that means to you. I, I was reading your beautiful post about your family and your partnership um but tell me a little bit more about love in your life oh man i mean listen i think that you can't i know we've all heard everyone say this but you can't love anyone else responsibly unless you're loving yourself responsibly so something that and that's not something that i've always known it really took me into my adult life to really learn how to do that that is a hard practice so yeah. I think loving responsibly really starts with self-love and, and being nice to yourself and recognizing how perfect everyone is. And when you start from there and, and branch out just from your heart, I don't think you can go wrong even when things aren't pretty because mm -hmm. they're not going to be all, you know, it's not going to be pretty all the time, even though we want it to be. Um, so I love that. <laughs> I think that's really where the baseline is for me. And, you know, this year has been so hard the past year and really it just like getting to the basics of love, like just being present in it. Um, right. That's I think also loving responsibly to me, like letting yourself live in each moment. Yeah. 
I've been, my partner and I were talking about how, how much like being flexible has been part of it. It's like, we truly could not predict really anything and just like really being able to be present, like you say, listen to each other's needs, which are just as unpredictable as what's going on. Yeah. Um, and then like respond. Um, however, <laughs> that works. <laughs> how do you, how do you find time for, how do you like make self love a part of, how have you made that a part of your routine if you have one it's been hard lately because i have a six month old so yeah know, <laughs> I'm really judicial with my time but that makes the time that i have to myself so precious so you know i meditate i i journal mm. um, i take the time to really sit down and have a, a conversation about anything but like parenting and work with my and you know something that we're passionate about um whether it's like a movie or art or something we're thinking about that that's where i feel like i find um that self-love and loving myself respectfully and just like having the mantras of you know believing in myself and if i'm saying something mean to myself in my head which i tend to do i don't know if you do that too oh yes <laughs> <laughs> We're so hard on ourselves and I have to like check my tone. I have to like right. check my tone all the time with the way that I'm talking to myself inside my head. So, and, and then I have to do that subsequently with everyone around me too. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was, I remember thinking like the way that Gollum talks to themselves is actually like <laughs> a healthy practice we all need to adopt. You know, you do sometimes have to reason from the different, different emotional places <laughs> that we're in. I love <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All the way to my heart. <laughs> um, okay, well, lost my space. Oh yes. Um, do you think words and actions are important when practicing loving respectfully? And what do you watch out for? I guess that's words and actions, in in addition to just intentions, maybe. Right. And how do you watch out for like the effect that words and actions can have? I mean, I think it's everything. It's everything. And, and I've been in relationships where it didn't work with words and actions. And, you know, it was really unhealthy and, and not, and not great and toxic. And what I think um, I've learned now is that it does matter how you present when you even when you have an issue with someone you love, and, and there you want to have an argument. Um, the way you approach it and ha and like the avenues you take, that's everything. And, and the, the tone you set for how a conversation can go when there are problems or when you need to talk about love or um, when you need to work through something you're going through. It, it's all about how you approach them with your words and your actions. And if, and you have to come from a place of respecting that they're a human just trying to work just trying to get through every day just like you are yeah there's always so much under the surface and there's always so much going on within ourselves day after day that you know it's just impossible to know everything about the people you love mm. so yeah listen. so like not making assumptions and just yes. coming with the uh, with compassion Coming with what Compassion. you feel and like knowing how you're dealing with what you feel because you can't control what someone else is feeling or what they're going to do, you know? So you can only control not letting things escalate or not letting things get to a disrespectful place. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's so true. And I, uh, in, in my partnership, I've, we've been discovering like the long, the closer we get, the more important it is that we don't think we're the same person and think that <laughs> our emotions are always going to be the same like recognizing you know i might be really freaked out about this but he might not and so we need to bring different and balanced energies to the moment totally especially now because we're all cooped up together and even in that like even when we're all together all the time 24 7 in our household in our little boxes like there's still we live such different lives in here that's right Thank goodness, because <laughs> these boxes are not enough. Beautiful. But... <laughs> Can't trap us. Yeah. 
Um, if you are just turning, tuning in, I am Sasha Bloor, and I am sitting with super talented Melissa Benoist, um, and we are talking about love. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just a small, a small thing. Um, um, I think those were the que those were those were the questions. Will you? I've seen so many people ask about. Baby Huxley, tell <laughs> us about, give us the update. <laughs> that is a love in my life that is just pure and unadulterated. Like, <sighs> there's just nothing complicated about that, which I love. That he's just my whole heart. I know exactly what you mean because I have a dog. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you have a whippet? He's an Italian, he's a very large oh, Italian said, greyhound. Oh, <laughs> but that's also. No baby. What? They are our children. I certainly treat him like one. <laughs> <laughs> have you, have, has that been a big change for you, would you say? Totally. And during this ideal time to raise a child? I don't I, know. I feel, I, there are pros and cons. It's weird because he's literally barely met any other human um, <laughs> and never seen his doctor without a mask on. But <laughs> so I don't know how that's going to be like out. terrified of a mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but you know, it's, uh, I, I, I would never change the time that I've had with him now. Yeah. That's been precious. Oh. It's my turn to ask you questions. Let's do it. Let's do it. I want to ask you some questions about love. Do you find that sometimes like if you're going through a challenging time or a hard time in your life where you're feeling irritated and impatient that your communication with your loved ones is affected? And do you have any tips that you may have to improve this? Oh my gosh, still learning yeah. the tips. I, one, I, I definitely, I, I always like, especially with my, my partner, I, I cannot put on like a fake front at all. And I often, you know, I, I always try to show up, even if I'm really overwhelmed by something or stressed out, try to show up really calm. People tell me I, I seem mostly quite calm on the inside, do not feel that way. And my <laughs> partner can see it. So one thing that we've learned is like, how to make things more manageable is kind of like you said, I, I have to be able to step away and process things. Our relationship is stronger when, when I can be independent with my with the various crises that life throws at you and, and stuff like doing drag. I paint myself, transform myself into this whole other person. That makes me feel like I can face anything. <laughs> um, and I, I think that that's brought strength to our relationship. And he has his own, uh, my partner Johnny has his own rituals of strengthening. He'll go off and he'll He'll dance and do a high kick, and he feels like a million bucks. I wish I could do those <laughs> things, <laughs> but I'll, I'll watch. We all, we, all <laughs> we get our tensions out in different ways. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I love that idea. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. Even it, when I'm trying to process through something, Chris will, my husband will, he's very good at having, he just, his mind, I guess, is quicker than mine in, in conversations, I guess, but he knows exactly what to say. Yeah when he has the thoughts and I just can't do that. I have to step away and process and come back to things. That's that right, are, yeah. When, especially when I'm going through a rough time or feeling impatient, which I've, I'm a very impatient person, so. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you can have, but you can have a relationship between someone who like maybe processes more externally and someone yeah. who needs to go pull away it's like it is a balancing act but i yeah. love i love that you and your husband are nailing it <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll see you'll see how how your kid turns out and that'll be we'll a whole <laughs> a whole nother thing yeah it'll be a, a brand new person to add to the mix um here's my next question do you feel that respecting your loved one is just as important as loving them and mm. how things show up differently in your relationship <sighs> That's a, t that's a tough one, because sometimes I don't know what I think about, like, the idea of respect. And I, I've felt like sometimes I've heard it used in kind of a tricky way, where I feel like people talk about wanting to receive respect, which sometimes means, like, wanting to be treated in a better way than they want to treat other people. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, so respect is canceled in this house. But, but I think it means, it's supposed to mean something else, like, the idea of seeing all human people as, as 
deserving respect, not because of who they are or what they've done, but just That's like true. by virtue of being a human in this community, in this world. Yeah. And so it's like, it's, it's not because of anything. It's just that like that respect to everyone has to receive. So that to me, I'm like, okay, that's just as important as love for sure. It's a prerequisite to loving properly is seeing them as, as deserving of respect in that way. So that's kind of my thought. <laughs> and I completely agree with you that everyone is deserving of love. That's it. Yeah. Oh. Oh, how nice. <laughs> I mean, we've done 20 minutes, so we're actually out of time. But I'm going to let me go through these questions really quick and see if I can. Okay, people want to know. People want to know about Huxley. Okay, this could be interesting. Let me see. How about this one from McKay Klein? It says, do you have any advice about dealing with traumas and not letting them affect you? I think that's a big question. It's a big question that it, and and I'm glad you picked that one. That's interesting. Um, I would say in in my experience, I don't let them define me, hmm. and I recognize that they're a part of my journey. But and there's gratitude there for whatever traumas I've been through that have shaped who I am not definitive of who I am you know so you walk through life holding yourself with pride that you've been through what you've been through and survived whatever trauma survived but you know don't let them define and just always recognize that what about like you? literally writing this down <laughs> 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 it's that it, you're grateful for the way they've shaped you but yes. it's not not in a definitive way Yes. I think that is so beautiful. And it's not, maybe it's not about not letting them affect you. Yeah, I mean, you have to let them affect you. That's how you work through yeah. it. And and even oh. if you have traumas that you're tri you get triggered by even years later, you have to go through that um, yeah. and not be afraid of it. That's self-love. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and you and you don't know yourself separate from all your experiences, so there's no point spending time wondering what if, really. Yeah, totally. This is like my first question. Search. Let me see. I don't even know how you're doing it. I'm very impressed. I'm I I went on my my dog's finsta earlier to test <laughs> to make sure I knew what the buttons meant. Your dog has a finsta. <laughs> I shouldn't have announced that. <laughs> um, okay. Ooh, this is kind of cute. Oh, let me see. How do you bring love into your friendships in a world that values romantic love? Hmm. How I mean, do you bring love into your friendship? Like bring... Oh, yeah, having having friendships that that fill you with that same feeling as that as that one close relationship for me it's probably about like also thinking about friendships in that same way about being open to to change mm -hmm. transformation um not losing yourself and your friends and seeing that yeah. they're separate yeah i think that's a great way of putting it also, just with the times we're living in, like, communication is key. Yeah. How have you balanced that <laughs> during these, I, during these I, times? I don't know. Some days it feels like all I've done is Zoomed with family and friends. And by the end of the day, you're like, oh, <laughs> like, I, can't, I can't look at a screen anymore. But you're doing it because, yeah. you know, you have to keep those bonds. Um, I don't, so I don't know. I don't know how I'm balancing it. I don't know if I am. And and sometimes I, I you know, I don't check in on my friends as much as I should. Um, so I, I guess it's just reminding myself that I have, that I should and, and, you know, getting my phone out and just texting them randomly that I love them. Mm, I love that. I was, I was looking up a list of like, things to do that will just like make you feel better. And one of them is 
sending an encouraging message to someone that you love. And it's like, that's so true. Yeah. You think that something that you can do for yourself is give love to other people. <laughs> it really, it <laughs> like, it makes you feel better too. Totally. Oh, well, I think we are out of time, actually. This has been so nice chatting with you. It was such a privilege, truly. Likewise. I and everyone in these comments is just mesmerized by your wisdom, your beautiful smile, <laughs> your incredible, um, incredibly exciting projects ahead. Um, I, I do want to say that you should head to absolute.com slash US slash love responsibly, where there's more conversations about these ideas of love and friendship and respect. And also you can tune in next Friday because they're doing another in the series of fabulous conversations between people. That's uh, February 26th. Um, thank you so much, Melissa. Thank you. thank you so much. I've loved talking to you and I am as mesmerized by you. You're just fantastic. The feeling is so mutual. Love to you. Love to everyone out there. Love to Absolute. Take care of yourselves. We need you. Mwah. Bye everyone.